Hi, welcome to the worship experience at River of Life Ministry. I'm Pastor Joyce Newman, and I know you're going to be blessed. So engage and receive in Jesus' name.
stand on that, Father God. But we just thank you that you're coming into this place, that you're walking into this room, Father God. And we have such a reverence for you, God. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're going to fill us to overflow. And we stand on your word. We stand on your promises. Thank you, Father God. Just sweep over this room right now in the name of Jesus.
just going to pray as you're just doing that last little bit. God, that's true. We can't live without you. I thank you, God, for what you have done in each of our hearts and minds. And I thank you for a paradigm shift today in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you, Father God, that you loved us first. And God, that we love you. And now that we love you, Lord, we can love ourselves. And because we can love ourselves, we can love each other the way that we're supposed to. Your word says to love our neighbors as ourself. That's the second yeah. command. But so many of us, have, of us have been orphans and walking around with orphans' hearts, not really understanding the love of God. So I pray tonight an explosion. Today, an explosion. In Jesus' name, in each one of our hearts, in each one of our minds, and God, that we would just yield, yield to you, allowing you, God, to be all that you are. Because, Father, we truly can't get enough. And, Jesus, it is all about you. And we thank you, Father God. And I thank you, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the triune God. I thank you that you are the healer. I thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. I thank you, God, that you will never leave us or forsake us. You are amazing, and we worship you. And all this worship has been for you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. worship what can happen to your heart and what can happen to your mind and how God can just come in because he loves this he loves that we come together as a body of Christ he loves that we come together and we worship he loves us we're his kids right he loves it when he sees you out golfing when he sees you out miniature golfing for those that can't golf you know, uh, he loves you when you're riding your motorcycles and he loves you when you're on your job throwing sand or taking care of people. He just loves you. You know that your gifts and callings are without repentance. In other words, you were born with these. When you were knitted together in your mother's womb, God said, this is what I'm going to give this person and this is what I'm going to give that person. And I was thinking about this this morning because I was thinking about somebody close to me and sometimes they feel weird. You know, and I mean, literally, I mean, we can all say we're weird. You know, we are peculiar. But, I mean, this person, it's not a positive statement. It's kind of a negative statement. And I was thinking about that this morning. And uh, the Lord says that this person needs to understand that they are not weird. That they were so foreseen by me that how they are is exactly how I formed them to be. They're not supposed to be like everybody else. They're not supposed to 
think like everybody else. All of us are different, and every one of us are important. And so I know my task because God's put it in my heart just to share that with this person because they really believe what they're speaking. See, there's power in what you say. And so the Word of God says that there's power in our words, that there's life and death. And if you're going to speak death all the time, you're going to walk in that. You're going to walk in what you say about yourself. You're prophesying over yourself. And so it's important that as God starts to come into our hearts and he starts to change us from the inside out according to Ezekiel, it says in Ezekiel chapter 36, I think it is, um, that when we receive the Lord, we get, first of all, we get a new spirit prior to receiving the Lord. And then upon that, then the spirit of God can come and join us because we're no longer in our, in our form being birthed into the world, which was in sin. He comes, he gives us a brand new spirit. And then he joins us. And that's where the transformation begins. And so for some of us, it's a process. I've been a process most of my life. And, um, but I love that I have went through the process because God's amazing. He has proved himself to be faithful. You know, and one of the things I also was thinking about this morning was how many of us sit there and think, I'm going to go to church when I'm better. I'm going to go to church when, when, when I don't have issues, when, when I'm past this issue that I'm dealing with. And that is such a scheme of the enemy. That is a lie from the pit of hell because you should be in church with those issues right. and with those schemes or with those issues because the scheme of the enemy is to keep you out of church. You can't go there. Those people are going to know you and they're going to they're gonna judge you. Well, I promise you, if a Christian is judging you, God will take care of them. <laughs> he will expose them. Mm -hmm. Amen. He will. Because that's not what the church is called to do. We're called to come together to edify and build up. There is correction in a church. Absolutely there's correction. Jesus corrected his disciples and the people as he walked with them. But most of the time he was building them up. And he was speaking life into them. And he was breathing life into them. And as you start to know Christ and who he is, you're going to walk in that. And that's what happened on Thursday night. To my sister and it was an amazing night Thursday night you just never know what God's going to do in this house and on Thursday night um, we didn't even we didn't even do live uh, and I had to apologize for that but it was such a personal intimate night and and what God wanted to do was to speak life into every person that was in this room and so Thursday night it started out with with words of knowledge in some healing that took place up here through the song Miracles, which is an amazing song. God just started to move in that. And then the next thing um, I know, the Lord just moves me back to pray for a, a young man over here and then over to, to Ashley, right? And so I had my eyes closed. Uh, and I don't normally have my eyes closed, but I had my eyes closed as I was praying for Ashley. And she's taller than I am. <laughs> but I could just, all of a sudden, God just broke whatever that bondage was in her life. You could feel the bondage on her. You could feel the fight. But when it broke, peace just came over her entire body. And everybody that was watching, I heard say, wow, yay, right, amen, right? Because why? He came to set us free. He came to make us free. He came to show us who we really are and whose we really are. Not always how we come walking into church. Even Christians that have been saved for a really long time, we walk in a stump and a slooper sometimes. Right? Or whatever the word is. Stupor. All right. <laughs> I knew I was getting some of the vowels and words. So anyways, but that's the thing. And when you come in, it's all right to come in that way. Please come and invite your friends. Invite your family. Just let them come and experience God themselves. Every service is completely different. But this is the thing. It's not to grow the building. It's not to grow river of life. God said he would sustain us, and he has all these years in this room. He has an influx of people in and out of here all the time. He touches the lives of those that will be open to him. Yeah. Not to me, not to my husband, Dan, not to the people, but to him. If you come searching, you'll find. Yeah. If you really want freedom and you are brave enough to walk into river of life ministry, you will find it. Amen. You will find it. But then it's up to you, and it's up to your relationship with the great I am, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords to walk it out he will give you everything that you need everything because he is a life giver he's a life giver that's who he is and so often you know um i don't have all the answers okay and uh i just don't but i don't believe that god brings tragedy into our lives i don't believe that 
but I believe that tragedy is used for the kingdom of heaven, that God can take it and take tragedy and different things that are happening in the world and in our life to reveal his son and to reveal him yeah. into life so those that might never, ever be open. He loves us. Yeah. He loves us, and he loves this world. For God so loved the world, not just river of life, the world, that he gave his only begotten son. So I'm not a naysayer because I don't have all the answers, but I know my Lord, and he saved a wretch like me. He saved me out of bondage, and he is continually, every day, setting me free because I have to choose this day whom I will serve. And as for me and what my husband says, our house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. And we walk in agreement, and we serve the Lord. Yeah. But it isn't because we're afraid that some tragedy is going to come into our life. It's because we love him, and we understand the love that he has. I mean, we exploded into the love of God, and that's what the whole world needs. They need the Christians to come alongside in Houston or any other place, but to encourage them and reassure them that God loves them, that he sent Dan to Houston to go help them, or whomever, or monies from this state, or wherever. But in the name of Jesus, it's being sent. And I know that it doesn't go that way because there's so many secular great things out there too that send, that don't know God, but God still uses. Doesn't it say that he'll take the wealth? Yeah. And <laughs> it's amazing. So I want you to be assured today that God loves you, that God loves you. That he's amazing, and he's an atmosphere changer. And that's this song, you know, that we're singing right now, and we kind of went a little longer than we normally do with it, but, man, when the Spirit of God is on something, it's really hard to just to stop, you know. And that's what our fire nights are for. When we have fire nights, we don't have to stop. You know, we can keep going and going and going. But in honoring people and them coming, it's important to honor their time as well. And, and so I just want to um, talk to you a little bit as I'm going to go back and forth because it said the name of the song is when you walk into the room. Well, when you walk into the room, it's talking about God, the presence of the Lord. And I love that you can feel him and sense him in this room. I love it when I go into people's houses and sometimes I just get such a, such a sense of the spirit of God just resting in this place. Uh, sometimes when I go to other churches, even I get hit and I just begin to weep, weep and I don't know why, but I know that it's the spirit of God. Sometimes when I start getting in conversations about God, God and the things that he's doing and even talking about people's problems I'll begin to weep but it isn't I that it's weeping it is the spirit of the living God that is within me because he weeps for us because he loves us and he knows our need and he sees what's going on with us amen, amen. and so when he walks into a room everything changes darkness starts to tremble at the light that he brings now I just want to take you someplace really quick about that let's go to um uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 26. Somebody will holler out the page number. The Bibles are all the same in here, so you can pick them up and follow along. Uh, Luke 8 and verse 26. Actually, um, 1190 is the page number. 1191. <clears throat> okay, so this story is, uh, of course, Jesus. Jesus is, he's now in his ministry and he's going out and he's being used, you know, to set many people free. You know, his presence, he walks by people, people are touching him, and the virtue is just leaving him because he carries healing within him. He is the creator. He is our father, but he came in the likeness of a man. But he was in his ministry now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit was upon him. It came down and it rested on him and it remained. That is when his ministry began. So now he's out there in ministry. And he comes, he, it says in verse 26, it says, Then they sailed to a country of the Garden Gardeners, which is opposite Galilee. And when they stepped out on land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time and he wore no clothes nor did he live in a house but in the tombs when he saw Jesus he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said what have I to do with you son Jesus son of the most high God I beg you do not torment me 
So I just want to just stay right there for a second. So when he walks into a room, everything changes. So he just walked out of a boat into a land, and everything began to change, and darkness started to tremble because darkness was where this man was. He was in a complete place of darkness being demonized by demons, right? And so darkness uh, starts to tremble at the light that he brings. So I want to reassure you that rather it's you or somebody else that you know that if, if the people get into an atmosphere where the Spirit of God is allowed to live and be who he is, the darkness within will start to tremble. Amen. Right? And so it says later in this passage, it says that, um, I just want to skip ahead because there are a lot of things I want to share with you today. But they tried to shackle him and they tried to chain him. They couldn't because he was so in strength. He was strengthened. And even Jesus says, what is your name? And he says, legion, because he's many. Yeah. But this was the thing. Jesus just wanted this man to be free because he loves them. And so what happened? He ended up casting them out. And this man, it says in uh, verse 35, then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Amen. Please do not give up on those people that have been diagnosed with stuff. Amen. Because I promise you, Jesus can come in and wipe them clean. Amen. He can change the atmosphere. But we're so taught that we've got to go with what things are being spoken over us. I'm going to give you a testimony. I was, it was spoken over me that I had diabetes type 2 about six years ago. And I have refused to let that be part of my life. Now, that is a huge step of faith for me because the whole world says, you got to watch this, you got to do this, you got to take medication, and if your cholesterol is this, and they start giving you all these batteries of tests, you know, like you got, they give you all these fear factors to go along with the fear that just got placed on your life. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I, I can't accept that. I, I just, I'm, I'm too young, and, and I'm too, I'm, I'm a child of the king. I just can't do this. I don't have time for this. Lord, I can't have sickness and disease in this body because this body has been set apart for you. And God, I want you to make me healthy and whole. This is what they say, but I want you to prove that it's not true. And so what has happened ever since that very one test that has ever showed positive in me, every single one for the last six years after the first one has showed negative. Yeah. Every, all my numbers that should be all kitty wampus and going all over the place are good. They're getting better. You know, and it's because of the Christ, the King. Because of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that, that you're supposed to stop taking medications and not listen. But you listen to the Holy Spirit. I was listening to the Holy Spirit. I wasn't doing this out of religion saying, well, I have to do this because I'm a pastor and God says that I have to prove that I'm this person. I don't got to prove anything to anybody. Right. Amen. But the Lord spoke to my heart, don't receive that. He said, don't receive that. So it was hard for me. Because it was a whole lot easier to receive it than say, uh-uh, I'm not going to receive it. So every time it came at my mind and on all my sheets and you would say, what have you been diagnosed with? I would write that, but then I would say, but it's a lie. It's not the truth. I don't have it. Because I had this thing going off in my head, well, you can't lie because it was said this, but the truth is. And then I, I heard somebody say one day, you know, it's okay to uh, understand stand this, but believe this. It's okay to understand this and these things that are happening to us, but believe what God says. Believe what he says. So listen, if he can, if he can come into a life of people that are demonized and he can rebuke them, Jesus doesn't have to be here to rebuke them That's right. because he's here. Amen. You don't need one physical body of Jesus anymore because Jesus ascended and sits at the right hand of the Father and he sent God, this, God the Holy Spirit, who lives in all of us, the Spirit of Jesus. It says in the Word of God that the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us, which means we are atmosphere changers, which means that if the Holy Spirit is leading you, don't ever try to do it out of religion. You've got to know that it's God, because if it's God, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to be afraid, but yet you'll do it in fear, and the Spirit and the power of who he is will move in you. And that's what happened on Thursday night. 
it took everything in me to call out the things that God was showing me. And the only reason I knew is because it happened to my body. And I'm healthy. I know I'm not these issues. So I knew I was to speak them out. So it was everything in me to speak out what God was showing me in my physical body because when I started feeling these pains, I said, God, what's this for? And he says, there's people in this room I want to heal. So I called it out, and the people that uh, believed that it was them, they came up and they got prayed for. It was amazing, but he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. And then what did he do? He had me pray specifically for a couple of people, and we got to see amazing things. And then from there, he still wasn't done. He decided to show us that he's a good father, and it was such an intimate night that he spoke something to every one of our lives. And I'm thankful that my vessel was used to do that, but it all came from God. And it should have encouraged you and brought you closer to the Father because that's our task, is to bring them closer to the Father. And he will use us to bring his people closer to the Father because he died that we would live. And we carry life in us that he gave us. But it's to give away. It doesn't mean you lose part of what you had. That ain't it. <laughs> You're just spreading the wealth. <laughs> it's amazing. So, right? So what happens? So he's sitting at the, at the feet of Jesus. Somebody that was demonized sitting at the feet of Jesus. So I love that he's an atmosphere changer. So that when he walks into a room, every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet. I don't know if anybody in here has ever experienced a breakthrough with the Lord, but it just does something to you and you just, you just can't get enough. You just can't get enough. You want more. You've never experienced such a thing. And you want more. And God loves that, and he'll give you more. Not the same thing. Because if, if, if all of a sudden, every way we expect God to move, is we're going to feel a twinge in our leg, and Jesus is here. Then we're going to look for this twinge in our leg for Jesus to be there. So don't ever be comfortable. Always ask, God is a shoe. Father is a shoe. Lord, are you moving me? And, and will it add? Will it bring multiplication? Is it full of love? It's the Lord. Is it, is it, is it biblical? Is it, does it line up with the word? Not the word, because people can take the word and manipulate people all day long. But you'll know. Because it's so selflessness. And people, by nature, are not selflessness. But in Christ, we become selflessness. Amen? Amen. It says, so, and we worship you. I'm at the song. We worship you. We love you. We'll never stop. Can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. Can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. I'm so excited when I have special time with God, and sometimes I, I just can hear him, and I just can't stop. And I remember that this is all for you, God. This is all for you, God. It's important to worship the Lord. Worship brings you into communion with the Holy Spirit. It brings you breakthrough. It brings you things that maybe me standing up here preaching may never bring you. But maybe you'll get it while you're being prayed for. Maybe you'll get it through a word of knowledge. Maybe you'll get it through prophecy. But God is always wanting to give you something. If you come looking, you'll find him. Yep. You'll find him. But you won't find him the same way. Well, i got to have Pastor Joyce pray for me because she hears God and I, I just really need to hear from God. Well, Pastor Joyce doesn't pray for people and says, Marcy's praying for people. Oh, I'm not going to be able to hear from God today. Yes, you are. Because God is God. And he works through his people. It doesn't matter the person. It's never the person. Yes, some of us have gifts and callings. Yes, I walk in some things Marcy doesn't. Marcy walks in things that I don't. But the thing is, God still moves through all of his people. And she would have enough wisdom ministering to call me over if, if I needed to be there. Same with my husband. If, if we know, I've called people in at ministry time to minister to somebody because I know they have that gift. I know they're the ones that are supposed to administer that, not me. See? But it's so exciting when God starts to use us. It's exciting, and you need to let him use you. Amen? Amen. All right, so um, I wanted to talk about that, and I wanted to talk about... I want to talk about, and I'm, you don't have to go here, but I'm, I'm actually in John um, 18, and this is when um, Jesus was being betrayed, and he's going to be turned over to 
um, the soldiers. And so Judas had already betrayed him. Uh, they've already had the, the supper that they had, and Jesus spoke about his broken body. And um, so Judas had went and to turn him in. So in, in chapter 18 of John, it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over to uh, Brook Kidron, where there were, was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew this place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officials, from the chief priests and the Pharisees came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things, I love it. Jesus, therefore, knowing all, he knows everything. It's amazing. He's an amazing God. When we, we, you can't hide from God. You can't hide from Jesus. He knows it all. You know what the best thing is? It's transparency. When you understand that getting everything out of your mind, which is the playground, you're so afraid if people knew this about you, they would not love you. But you know when you become vulnerable, vulnerable, people love you more. Because what you do is you trust them, but not them, the Spirit of God in them. When God gives that person to you in your life, they are responsible for the trust. It's never trusting a man or a woman, but it's the Lord. And when you trust those people, they know it's the Lord, and it builds them up. It's like, wow. I can remember at the women's conference the very first night, the breaking. I call it the breaking night. It was amazing. And there was a young lady that came up, and I had had a word at the very end. And it was a word that, that they had something that they had, um, um, something that was in their closet, and, it, and they needed to to get it out and it was very important and it had to do with unfa being unfaithful and uh, so during that time during the ministry time as the women were coming up a uh, young lady approached me and she said that word is for me and I, when I leave here I'm going to go home and I'm going to tell my husband she says this has just haunted me forever and it was for many many years ago and so when I seen them the next time they said that they had went home and God had prepared the heart of the husband to hear and the husband was said okay now let's just keep moving forward now that was because the right time transparency is so important and God moved in that and did the protection and the healing and everything and there that back then they weren't in the Lord they weren't serving God they had no idea what they you know but still it was a it was a secret but what it did for me it made me love this person more because I knew how hard it was on them to humble themselves and share it it's hard to share your secrets and so when they did I just my heart just melted and I just I feel like don't you hurt my baby you know, anybody. That's how you feel for people. You know, these are, you just love them. So please don't ever be afraid. Don't let the devil keep stuff in your head because that is the playground for him. Okay, so I don't know why I got off that way. But anyways, <laughs> Jesus, knowing all things, oh, that's how I got there, um, would come upon him, went forward and said to them, whom are you seeking? They said to him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. And now when he said to them, I am he, so there's two things going on at once that they're writing, they drew back and fell on the ground. Now, I believe they went down in the spirit. I believe that the spirit, you know, the heaviness, the weightiness of the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, when he stepped forward and said, I am he, that his presence, he's an atmosphere changer, moved them back, and they went down. See, when people go down in the spirit, they should not be pushed. Sometimes it might look like they're being pushed, and I know that some people do that. I've had that experience and had a courtesy fall, but that's not really what takes place. What really takes place is when the presence of the Lord sometimes enters into the atmosphere for you because you're special to him and you're seeking him and he's wanting you to understand his love for you or whatever it is all of a sudden you 
start to feel a weightiness. It's just a weightiness. You just, your, your breathing changes. A peace comes. That's what happened to Ashley. A peace just filled her. The presence of the Lord just overtook her. And it was amazing. So it's never anything scary. So when, when he comes like that, you know, most of the time you choose to yield to that. Once in a while he might, not, not, he might knock you off your feet. Um, but most of the time it's something that you yield to because the, the weight of his presence is just weighty and you just get all kind of weird, you know. And somebody's there and you just lay down and you bask in his presence. Sometimes you're aware of what's going on around you, but you feel like you're kind of in a fog because now you're just talking to the Lord. And it's like, God, just do it. Take it. Get it out of here. I can remember being on the floor years and years ago when I first come to the Lord and I was so full of junk. And I would literally, I could feel him, my body would torque, but I could feel the pain just leave me. I could feel him literally taking all the shame and all the junk and all the wrong things that I believed about me, that I believed about my family, that I believed about people. You know, everything that made me want to run from people and run from God was just being pulled out of me because I yielded to him. I didn't know. You can't lean to your own understanding. The Word of God tells us that all the time because His ways aren't our ways. But whenever any kind of move happens with the Spirit, you want to explain it so people understand what's happening. I love it because um, I can remember one time there was a young man here, and we're almost done, but there was a young man here, and he was... He was a really tall guy, and I'll never forget him. It was Kathy's first visit here, maybe, or second visit, Kathy E. And um, Kathy E. was not used to the, the move of the Holy Spirit. And she, this man, I ended up praying for him prior to me preaching because God said. And so he, you just would not believe the demeanor of this guy. I mean, he could be the guy that was in the tombs. I mean, he was really bound up. He was so desperate for God and freedom that all of a sudden he's down on the floor. I'm thankful that Edie knew to get Dewey to get over there. He's going to go down. She has the <clears throat> sense of, of knowing these things are going to happen. And, and Dewey caught him. He laid right out on the floor the whole entire service as I preached. Amen. And Kathy watched him the whole service, watched his eyes, see if he, she goes, nobody could ever do that. Nobody could do that. You know, but what was God doing? Healing this man who needed to be knocked out totally because probably he could never face some of the things that the Lord was removing because he's a gracious father. At the same time, he's working over here and Kathy, who had never experienced it and was scared, but yet seeing that it was the hand of God, it could never be a man or a woman, it was God. So the Lord is always working. And I'm just up here preaching the word, being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that guy's still down there. And I, in my mind, you know, because that was like, yeah, because, but see, he's up close and personal. So when he enters in a room and you, you're carrying him and you enter a room and darkness starts to tremble and th weird things start to happen, know that you're carrying light, something that the whole world is needing right now. They need you. They need you. If you are a truly born-again believer and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and I don't know where you're at spiritually on the, on the, what, the scale, it doesn't matter. If your heart is full of love and, and just let God be who he is through you, you will be used to do some amazing things for other people. Amen. And what it will do to you is you will grow in leaps and bounds. Amen. So I want you to know that it's time to start walking in some rooms with a new with a new vision of who you are in Christ Jesus. And these, these are just a couple. I had some other ones saved too of different things that the presence of the Lord would just do while he was here on earth. You know what I'm saying? And so you carry the same power that rose Jesus from the grave inside of you. But we're not Jesus, but we yield to him. That's why he gets all the glory. It's not us. It's him. We're joined to him, but it's him. So it's important that you allow him to be who he is through you. I can't touch everybody. You can't touch everybody. But God can touch everybody through anybody that is willing to allow him to be their Lord and Savior first. And then he can work through them. 
Amen. Amen. Now, God can use anything because he's God. But I prefer to him use me because I know him now. I don't, I didn't, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the tracks where I used to be uh, because that just wasn't a good place. So I just want you to be encouraged today that you're atmosphere changers. And I don't know what your atmospheres look like, but I know that you're called to change them. Amen. And that you're going to run into some other people that are atmosphere changers again. Oh, I got to tell you a really cool revelation that I got out in um, um, California. I love God. He's amazing. So I want you to know that you're drawn to people that have an anointing. Whenever somebody has an anointing, there is like this thing about them that when they're under the anointing, it is the Spirit of God. So because we're made in the image of God and we're believers, we're drawn to that. Even the world is drawn to that. They don't know why. And some of them get really mad at you. you know. But nonetheless, they're drawn to you, right? So here I am. I'm out at, in, in California a couple weeks ago, and I'm with all these people that either they're saved, I think, at least they should be because we were at a, a school of prophets. And so most every person there was either uh, operated in the prophetic or they were a prophet. And so it was a school of them. And um, But me being me, um, I was drawn to a certain male. And so when I was drawn to the male, I never talked to him, but I was drawn to him and I went back and I said, God, I know I got a pure heart. There's no way that I am drawn to this man. But my first thought in the natural was, oh, you're attracted to this man. You're attracted to this man. Because that's what the devil wants us to believe. But the Lord is so awesome because I love my husband. I, I'm attracted to him. But I, I want, I'm being real here because I'm not the only one on this earth that faces these issues. And so I'm out there. My heart is pure. But all of a sudden, I know I'm attracted to this person. I'm being drawn to this person. And, of course, I'm staying away because I know I'm being drawn and you run away from temptation. But then the Lord showed up. And he said, you are not drawn to that man because he's a man. You're drawn to that man because of the anointing on his life, and it matches yours. Amen. That's why you're drawn. He says, have peace, my daughter. And I was like, I got God buttons all over me right now. <laughs> because, see, the devil does never want us to get by anybody that, that has an anointing that, that we can draw and learn and build off from one another. He'll make it a worldly thing and make you think like you're, uh-oh, it's a problem. But uh, you got to understand, I surround myself with great people, so I would not just go have a conversation one-on-one -on -one without, and he, neither would he, because we know you got to set yourself up for safety. But I want you to know that if any of you ever, ever go through that, please ask God, because it might just be the enemy. You may be drawn to somebody because of the anointing on their life and you're being drawn by the spirit of God because they have something for you and it's it's not sexual it's it's not a man woman attraction it, that's not it it's just God so I got freedom I'm like oh man I'm excited because you don't know that 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 really bothered me because I have a pure heart but but I always ask God to search it and what if it's not pure if it wasn't pure he would have told me that too he would say, eh, mm -mm, that's you, and he would have took care of it. But I, but I praise God that it wasn't me, and it truly was him. But I love that he gave me that because for years, since I've been serving God, that was always on my mind, always on my mind because of the lifestyle that I came out of. And so that's what the enemy does. He'll try to trip us up in old things, but this was God. So I just want to leave you with that. Because I believe there's some people that need to hear that that's in this room today. Um, amen. So let's pray. So God, thank you. You're amazing. And I pray, Lord, that we would remember that, Father, that when you just walked out, then they were going to cuff you up, that the, the men just fell back. Because you are the authority above all authorities. God, thank you that you could take a demonized person and they could be brought to their right mind and resting at your feet. And I pray that, Lord, for many. I pray, God, that we would know when you're moving in us so that we would be used of you, so that, Father God, that you would have your way in our hearts and our minds. God, that you would use us to set other people free because your truth is what makes us free, but truth has got to come so freedom can follow. 
So help us to be the carriers of the truth of the gospel. Help us to be all that you've called us to be. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Okay, so you got a song, Shay? <laughs> well, I don't want to do when you, we walked into the room because I did just, um, actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's do one by Plum. Because I really want to give people an opportunity to come up here and just, if the Lord really spoke to your heart about some things today, I want to give you the opportunity to come up here and um, spend some time at the cross. And if you I need wanna, to be prayed for. I don't know if some of you guys remember John. And John is sitting back here. He was here maybe three years ago, four years ago. All right. Yeah. Can you stand up? I know Marcy will remember you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She had me stand by you. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I actually, stand up with him, please. They, they're from over by Cadillac, and they came to visit us today. And uh, I'm super excited, and I think about them often because I'll never forget the day that I preached on David and Goliath, and I had John come up, and he held his hand out, and Marcy stands this high. It was just hilarious. And I love that people are willing to let... Um, God used them. But we're, I really didn't want you to have to stand alone. And most of the time, I, I don't have people stand. But I do want to speak to you. And I do believe that God says that you have a heart of purity. And that sometimes, I think you understood my story that I just gave. And the Lord wants you to know that you're free. And that you've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. He says that the past that you've had is to be let go of now. because And just step into your future to a greater degree. And the Lord says, whenever the enemy comes in to try to beat you up in the mind about old things, He says, oh, Always look at what it's going to do and you'll you'll catch a thief in action and kick him out because the Lord says to tell you that you're beautifully and wonderfully made and that nobody ha nobody carries a candlestick next to you he says you're precious in his sight yeah yeah mm -hmm. bless you amen yay okay if everybody could stand and we'll close with this song and then if anybody needs to be prayed for please come up and um, we'll get you prayed for